Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show and we're just moving on, moving along here. I know for you guys it's been a few days but for me it's only been a few minutes. All right, so um, what are we hopping into um, right now? So this is the Norton, oh sorry, Bodega Norton Barrel Select Cabernet Sauvignon 2010 from Mendoza, Argentina. Get a little close up on that. Um, Purchase this at HEB again uh, for two, 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 1078. I'm sorry, 1198. No, it regularly sells for 1198. I bought it for 1078, and um, uh, you know, again, it was a, it was a random pick. Uh, this is one of those wines I was like, I, I did the random number generator, and it popped up whatever number it was, and I figured out it was about where it was on the on the shelf and grabbed it. And when I did this, it was kind of funny because, um, you know, I used to work in retail, or especially specifically uh, grocery retail, and um, not for a store, but for a vendor. And uh, so product placement and all that, and I don't always notice product placement, but um, it was funny because I'm doing these wines, and in this, in this part of the aisle, every wine had two facings. No more, no less. Every wine, there was two, two of these bottles right next to each other, then it was the next label. So it was, it was kind of interesting. I, I never had paid attention to that. But then again, other wine shops and other HEBs may have you know three of one, you know three rows of one or one of one. Um, but in that particular HEB, it was two of every bottle. Okay, so... Um, Let's talk about this particular wine real quick. Um, so this was founded by a gentleman named Edwin Edmund James Palmer Norton. He was an English engineer, and in 1895, he bought the estate and land in Pedrio Lujan de Cuyo. All right, and he planted vines, created a winery soon after. Um, it was the first winery in Argentina south of the Mendoza River. Then in 1989, an Austri Austrian businessman named Jerno Langes Swarovski. Swarovski. Ovski. Anyway, of the famed crystal making family. Yeah, you can tell I don't really buy their crystal very much. So, all of you people who know that one are like, oh, yeah, it's real easy to pronounce that name. Uh, anyway, uh, he acquired the winery, convinced of the high potential of Argentina. And I got this directly from the website. Uh, it's a 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, and like I said, it's from the Lujan de Cuyo, Mendoza, Argentina. And uh, I, I was really interested in getting this because it is a cab, and I don't drink a lot of South American cabs. Um, I did have one as a blind recently and completely missed it. So um, this is really good because when I, it, you know, to advance in my studies, I'm going to be exposed to something like this, or potentially could be exposed to this, I think I would be. Maybe not in the advanced, but maybe in the master level I could. So I need some more experience with this. Sorry, I, I actually kind of like the nose here, so I was really just kind of going long on it. So on the nose, I honestly get kind of a really ripe plum on it. Um, you know, it's kind of hard with these lights to 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 have the same type of lighting for for the um, for uh, the color, but it actually kind of looks a little cloudy, and it could just be how the these lights are hitting this. Um, 
but it does look a little cloudy. But I get, I get, I like I said, I was getting that um, plum, a little bit of plum, but I was getting all the the kind of typical red fruit, like um, like the raspberry, even kind of a blackberry to it. And it's it's very much smells like a cab, um, not a taxi, but uh, it's very much smells like Cabernet Sauvignon. On the smell alone, I would not. I would not even think this was Argentina or South America or anything outside of the United States. So on the nose, it is very much a United States smelling wine. You know, a little bit of, a little bit of vanilla to it from the oak, a little bit of wood to it, no floral. So, um, you know, not a bad nose, pretty decent. Woo. Okay, so it kind of hit you really quick on the tannins on the gums, and then it kind of kind of disappeared, and then it really hit me in the tongue on tannins. And you know, um, it's not, it's not sweet by any means, but it's definitely a fruit forward wine. Um, there, there, there's a wine I've had recently and I, I want to say it was one of the vamp, one of the, um, not vampire, one of the Halloween wines. Um, it reminds me of there's, there's definitely a juiciness to it. Um, like I bit into some fruits. Um, the, the, the oak influence isn't to me overpowering at all. I don't get I don't get a lot of, I personally don't get a lot of those, those Christmas spices and those nutmegs or any of those, any of those spices or, or even pepper. Now, that is one thing I don't get is I don't get any, what's called pyrazine, which is that green or bell pepper quality out of it. Maybe a touch. But it's nothing, it's nothing like really, really obvious. And it could be now that I'm looking for it that I might, I'm, I'm thinking I might have it. But no, I don't really get any of that pyrazine in it. Um, you know, that's one of the markers of cab. And it's not just California cab. I mean, most cabs have that pyrazine uh, uh, flavor to it. But um, not all cabs do. But yeah. It, but always, it, 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 it tends to like confuse me why it doesn't have it, but I want to say it confuses me. I just, I just, when I know what it is, I expect it. And when I don't get it, I kind of get a little like, oh man, no peppers. You know, it's pretty decent. Um, let's see if there's anything here about about the winery that I didn't get from the website because it had nothing. Uh, so it was pretty high, 850 to 1100 meters for the vineyard. So, you know, what, uh, 27 to 3300 feet. And uh, we handpicked grapes from vines over 15 years old. 50% of the wine is aged in 12 months in French oak barrels and then additionally in bottles before release. A balance between grape and oak hmm okay firm structure rich flavor delicate finish yeah it doesn't really have much on here but anyway um you know it, it's pretty decent um even though it's aged for a year in oak um it doesn't have like an overpowering oak quality to it um tannins i would say are medium acids probably medium almost medium plus so you get a lot of you know kind of watering in the mouth You know, it, it tastes like some other California Chardonnays to it, so I don't see anything that's distinctive to make me think if this is a blind tasting. There's nothing to say, oh, yeah, this is an Argentinian Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, or maybe the California cabs I had tasted like an Argentinian Cabernet Sauvignon. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a $10 to $11 bottle of cab. It's... Pretty decent for the price. Um, 
I'm not blown away by it, but I'm not. Uh, but it's not a bad wine. It's not bad wine. You know, it's just kind of like, all right, it, it tastes like a lot of other similar bottles of Cab. Just like, you know, the, the Chardonnay tasted like a lot of other Chardonnays, but it was eight bucks. So, you know, it wasn't too bad. Um, if you see it in the store and you want something from Argentina, you just something different than, than California, go for it. It definitely doesn't have that Napa Valley Cab um, quality to it. So if you don't want that, then totally go for this. Um, if you want Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon or, sorry, or something like that, then no, you don't want this. I mean, I had a cab earlier today, um, and it was, it's not, a, it's not a Napa cab, it's a California cab, but, you know, if, if someone told you it was from Napa, you'd probably go, okay, yeah, it is. Um, but yeah. All right, so let's wrap this up. Um, as always, thank you for stopping by. Uh, again, episode 300 on April 28th. If you're going to watch it online, it's going to be on justin.tv. I'll have the link below for that. Um, and uh, it'll be at 7 p.m. Central Time. If you're going to be in the live audience, click the link for Eventbrite. If you want to register for a ticket, it's a free ticket. However, you will pay $20 at Max's Wine Dive where it's going to be held. Uh, be there between 6.30 and 7 to get signed, you know, to get set up and get, get paid and get, your, you know, get, the, get things going because we're going to start broadcasting at 7 o'clock. And um, so hit the Eventbrite thing. And if you're just going to watch it online, you can hit the Facebook page and just say you're coming. And, um, but yeah, for Eventbrite only if you're in the audience, don't sign up for it. And you're, you're meaning you're going to watch it online because I have limited seating for that uh, event and, uh, friend me up above, uh, click the links below about the wine and everything else and, uh, throw it, throw a duck or two since, uh, I'm not making any money off the event, uh, Max's is, which is fine. And, um, let's see what else that's going to do it. We'll see everyone again next time.